This is a look at, and I'm going to mispronounce this, it's spelled E-L-E, L-E, L, Ella, Ella Group. Anyway, the combination receptacle USB charger. It's model R1815D60AAC-WH. The WH probably stands for white. In our house, I label my chargers and cords and store them away from the rest of the family. That way I always know where they are. Seriously? My other half and daughter swap cords, charging blocks, and they can never find them when they need them. Dad, where's my iPad charger? Hmm, uh, ask mom. Which is why I got these receptacles. This package included two receptacles and each comes with a snap-on faceplate. The faceplates have squared edges, so unfortunately they don't match others in our home, but not a deal breaker. And the faceplates are white. You can probably get other colors as well. The receptacles are tamper resistant, but so tamper resistant, some plugs require quite a bit of force to get them in. You get them in though. The ports are supposedly able to recognize your device's charging protocols and requirements and optimize charging. I can neither confirm nor deny that, but it does charge my iPhone and iPad pretty quickly. I guess it can also charge cameras. Although I should point out it shouldn't be used with laptops. And I wouldn't want to plug in these $100 earbuds that specifically say not to use a charger higher than five volts, one amp. Output total is five volts, five amps, which is 25 watts. Remember, watts equals volts times amps. There is a there is one type A 2.7 amp USB outlet and two 3.3 amp plugs. One is type A and the other is type C for charging, um, I have no idea, other than a computer, which you're not supposed to plug in. These receptacles are UL and CUL listed, which I always look for for safety reasons, and rated 125 volts at 60 hertz and 15 amps. They're also available in a 20 amp version should you want to put them on a 20 amp circuit. Installation was easy enough, but I can see it being a bit annoying if you're wiring two of these things together. First of all, they're thick like GFCI outlets, perhaps even thicker, and the wall box must be the correct number of cubic inches, the minimum being three inches by two inches by two and a half inches. Hopefully if you're installing these, you're familiar with the box fill requirements of the NEC and know the handy formula for calculating box size based on the number of conductors. Yeah. Secondly, while the manual says they can be either back wired or wired around the screw terminal, I struggled to get a 14 gauge wire around the terminal. I did it, but there wasn't much clearance to get my loop around, so it's easiest to back wire. And it's not the typical back wiring where you insert the wires into the holes in the back. You put the wire under a tab, which again is challenging if you're wiring it into an adjacent receptacle. Anyway, use only 12 or 14 gauge solid copper Romex, turn off power at the breaker, hot to hot, neutral to neutral, ground to ground. A few safety items. If combined draw exceeds capacity of the USB ports, the charger shuts down to protect itself, so that's good. But there's no reset button like on a GFCI outlet, so I'm not sure what happens after it shuts down. Nothing in the manual about that. Also, it's always important to check the power requirements of your device and the specs that came with the charging block of your device. In most cases, you should be fine with modern Apple devices, but know that the amps of this USB charger are higher than a typical one amp charging block that comes with an iPhone. So your device will charge faster. The verdict is out on whether long-term battery performance is affected by charging a battery too quickly, but Apple claims that it's not. Hmm. One thing I'd like to see eventually would be a GFCI version of this product, given a place I had intended to install one of these is a GFCI outlet that's upstream from a series of other receptacles that it's protecting. Oh well, can't put it where I wanted, but I did install this one here in my workshop slash office and works great. Overall, these receptacles are decent and very helpful if there's a lot of charger block swapping in your household. I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.